We're talking relationships today, one week before Valentine's Day, which I think is such pressure because relationships to me can be male and female, but they can also be your friends. There's just all kinds of relationships. So I am so excited to have Emilia and Alan. I'm pretty sure I got your name right this time because it's the most gorgeous name. Um, Alan, you're going to have to wait a while, everyone. He did a podcast with me and I know they're in a relationship, but I also fell in love with him during my podcast. I fell, I fell in love with his story. Um, so much so that he does a podcast, um, with, um, next it's with the next, I'm going to screw it up next unit, next level university. You got it. And I grabbed his partner. He was on my Facebook Live this week, but everybody's going to have to wait a little bit to hear my podcast with Alan. But then he and I started talking and he said, well, I had this amazing relationship I'm in. And Alan's been in a few, a few serious relationships that came out in the podcast. Amelia also has been in some relationships. But like, haven't we all? Mm. I mean, I, I've been married almost 30 years. I've been in some serious relationships. Um, my husband, I mean, that's how we get to where we're supposed to be. Mm. I mean, you, you sort of crawl, walk, run. So I have with me Amelia and Alan. We're going to um, talk about their relationship. We're going to talk about the fact that they have come together having been in other relationships. They um, um, have a podcast, they're speaking, um, and now they have formed the we, which is the branding behind them. <laughs> and it's all things intimate relationships. And I'm really excited. Alan said to me, let's you know, do this. Let's, and I said, let's do it right before Valentine's Day. Um, because this is just such an odd time in our lives with relationships. Mm -hmm. We are, if you're in a relationship, you're testing your relationship. And if you're not in a relationship, you're sort of feeling isolated. So welcome, mm -hmm. Amelia, you're a delight already. We were talking offline, so I'm so excited to meet you. Thank you so much for having me on. It's so great to meet you too. Somebody so you guys, I should say you are in the Massachusetts area. Mm -hmm. um, so you're not, you're not local, but that doesn't mean anything in this day and age. Um, we'll keep, you know, we'll keep talking about how people can find you. Um, and I had, as I was posting this week that you were going to be on, I had so many people say, oh, I'm going to be listening and I need them. And I, I mean, I, I think that's really true. People really need help right now. Um, Alan, when you say people need help with their relationships, why, why, what's going on? So she actually is the one who got me to realize this simple truth that everything is a relationship. You have a relationship to money. You have a relationship to your own hair. You have a relationship to the clothes you wear. You have a relationship to every person, place, thing, and idea in your life. Mm -hmm. And the only question is, is it a positive relationship, a negative relationship or a neutral relationship? Mm -hmm. So I was a fitness coach for a long time. And, and I noticed that, that people had a negative relationship with food or a negative relationship with the scale. And until mm -hmm. you shift that relationship, they most likely won't achieve their goals. And so relationships are everything. And it goes far beyond just people. Mm -hmm. But I think the most important relationship in anyone's life is their intimate relationship. Even if you don't have one, it's your relationship to yourself and your relationship to your intimate partner, because that's where if that foundation is built strongly, everything else becomes more probable. So Amelia, when, when you were um, teaching Alan <laughs> what you already knew, was it, was it that a mindset it, you know, I mean, we, we're not always positive towards everything, but was it a mindset of how you look at things? Is that what you were really 
Yeah, I guess that's one way you could say it for sure. Because when you think about mindset, it, it is your it's your perspective, it's your appraisal, mm-hmm. it's how you see the world. And it's interesting because I always had a lot of people that would always tell me, Amelia, you're so ridiculously positive. Like, what do you drink in the morning? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, as a matter of fact, not coffee. It, it's just life, you know. Like I'm that obnoxious person. I drink life. coffee. I am positive, but I have to drink coffee. <laughs> right, right. So, you know, I'm just that obnoxious person that no one wants to talk to. On first thing on the on the morning, but at the end of the day, you know, it, it. I see it as you have this beautiful life. It's a gift, and so when you're able to really look at life like a gift, you're able to actually see that it's within your power to make a difference. And when it comes to your relationships, you have pretty much everything at your fingertips. And it really does come down to the way in which you look at the world. Because say, for example, if I were to have a relationship with Alan and say, you know, this is just a relationship that's just going to glide. We're not really going to be able to have any sort of inputs that's going to make a change. Say if, if one day we want to have three kids, you know, that's up to me to be able to communicate that, to be able to talk to him about it it's a team effort. And that's why we, we have the we above us because it's two parts that come together. And so when it comes to that, it, it really starts in the mind. Like every other behavior we have, it starts up here. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I do love that because, you know, even yesterday I am drinking my coffee and I'm starting my day and it's not even 8.30. And I had sort of forces of people trying to, you know, come at me um, with their negativity. Um, and what I realized is how I was going to respond. And I think that's part of it. I mean, they just, what they were saying or what they were doing was what they were going to do. Um, part of it is how you're going to react. I mean, it's hard not to sometimes let it bring you down, um, because it's, it it is a natural, uh, reaction, but I just sort of, at some point said to a person I was talking to, I'm like, I've had enough with the negativity. I've had enough of this. I'm, you know, delete. It was like, delete, delete, delete. Like I'm moving on. (laughs) Oh, that's so important. Sorry. And I get that with a lot of people we realize and something that I I've noticed that we kind of fail as a human society to realize is how much our environment impacts us. And Mm -hmm. Bianca, my partner, she and I did a podcast episode actually about how your environment impacts you so much. And that includes your digital environment. So Mm -hmm. on Facebook, Mm -hmm. who you let into your digital world is going Mm -hmm. to impact and influence you. You know, Alan and Kevin talk all the time about who your greatest influences are that you're the you're the the sum of the five people that you have in your life and so you know unfollowing making sure that you can create this beautiful bubble of abundance is so mm-hmm. important and it really is up to you because no one's going to do that for you as a matter of fact there's tech companies that are working against that mm. so it was interesting and um and this goes back obviously a long time i've been married almost 30 years mm-hmm. um and when I was dating, um, I, it, it was hard to date, you know, dating's hard. Mm -hmm. And then I met my now husband and I remember this and I still say this almost 30 years later, it was easy to date him. Mm -hmm. And that that's why I knew And, and I do, and because, and I, and I think about this in our relationship and life, life is hard. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And we've, we've been married, like I said, almost 30 years, three kids, lots of things coming at you, raising three kids, three adult children. Mm -hmm. So our relationship is easy, but life is hard. And I, and I think back to that. And I was thinking about that going into this conversation where, um, you know, I do have kids starting in the date, you know, in dating world and serious dating world where I say to them, you know, dating shouldn't be hard, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and to sort of keep that in mind, if dating is hard or you're with someone that it's, Mm -hmm. you know, that's hard, it's not the right person, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I, (laughs) Am I right? Am I sort of on the right trail? I love it. Go ahead, baby. <laughs> it's interesting that you say that. And you and I talked in the last episode about this briefly, but 
um, dating was very challenging for me up until I met Emilia. Mm-hmm. And I now think I understand why, um, because hindsight's twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. And this is nothing against any of my past partners, but I've come to realize that all relational issues, in my sincere opinion, come down to either goals in conflict, core values in conflict, or beliefs in conflict. So if you look at the we behind us, it's got the masculine and the feminine and the Mm -hmm. the top and any great relationship, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. That wasn't always the case in my opinion with my past relationships, not because I was bad or they were bad, Mm -hmm. but because we weren't necessarily aligned in terms of goals, values, and beliefs. If I have a belief that I can achieve anything I set my mind to, and I have a goal to change the course of history to impact a billion lives to all that kind of stuff. And I, my core values are personal development and massive dreams and, you know, helping others and philanthropy and stuff like that. If, if your partner doesn't share those Mm -hmm. already, then it's going to be challenging. The best analogy I have for this is like, imagine Emilia and I are in a car and we're driving from Boston to LA. She wants to go the Northern route and I want to go the Southern route. Okay. So that's a, a goal in our, a belief in conflict. She believes the Northern route will be better. I believe the Southern route will be better. So that's a belief in conflict. Now imagine we have the same goal. We both want to get to LA. So we have the same goal, but we have a core value in conflict. I want to listen to heavy metal the whole way. And I don't, this is hypothetical. I don't even like heavy metal, but yeah. And she wants to like like, uh, some, some native music or whatever. See, we've all been in a car with someone where we were irritated because we believed we should be going a different route. Maybe we had something different plugged into the GPS or right. maybe they were listening to music that we don't like. Mm-hmm. Imagine a relationship where you have no goals in common, no core values in common, and you don't both have a growth mindset. Yeah, it's going <laughs> to be hard, as you mentioned. With mm-hmm. Emilia from the very beginning, we've had hard moments. Mm-hmm. Right. And life is definitely challenging, especially where right. we live. But together as a team, it's been very easy in comparison. Yeah. And and that's and I think that's really important where there <clears throat> I find where some people, you know, it's not rainbows and lollipops mm-hmm. every day. That would be lovely, but that's not reality. And but the other thing is that, you know, when those hard times come, you know, you do want someone who has the same or is aligned with you and the values because then, you, you know, the team is, is the we, um, it, and I, it sounds, but that's what dating is. I mean, the truth of the matter is there's a little trial and error oh, yeah. and, and I'm a firm believer, you know, you know, sometimes you try on a shirt, you wear it, you don't like it, you donate it. <laughs> Yeah, but how many of us try on a shirt and convince ourselves that we really like it? Back well, buy it and then take it home. And it what? Too too many of us. <laughs> um, and Not just about shirts, there. Yeah. <laughs> Look, my my parents used to have a classic saying to me that they they were like, "God, if you could find an asshole, you would date them." Um, <laughs> But it goes back, you know, sorry, something. I was a lot younger. (laughs) I'm really old now. (laughs) No, no. It's how we respond to those situations. Like, yeah, back because we're natural human beings. We want to react. Emotions are involved. When you're in an Mm -hmm. relationship, whether it's committed or not, non-committal, your heart's at stake. And a lot of people don't realize that, especially when you're in in the younger generations. Right now, online dating, something that you mentioned your kids are getting involved with. We have a lot of friends that have met people and they're now their life partners. And also we've met, we've had people that have had really tough situations because your heart's at stake, but it really yeah. comes down to how are you going to respond? What I've noticed in people there, there often is a challenge where we don't see that there's distance in the relationship that I taught and shared with Alan is that there's time in between where we have something happen with us and to us. So for example, if Alan were to say something to me in the time in which I respond, there's a little blip in time where we can choose and we can change Mm -hmm. how we respond. But if we don't have our conscious awareness applied in that situation in an intimate relationship, especially this is what can deteriorate those and make those hard times even more challenging is, is 
it, we react, we just react. And how many mm -hmm. times are we saying things that we don't mean, right? Like, and it's just kind of vomiting out of our mouths. But like, that's something, whether it's online dating or in a 30 year relationship, something that we have really enjoyed is helping people raise their awareness to that very pivotal moment in time, because, you know, that's moments that we realize it's, it's those hard times, especially in those difficult conversations where we can respond in a way that is that favorite word aligned with our core values, our core beliefs and our core aspirations. And how you handle that is everything. It can be the foundation to your relationship or the deterioration of such. Mm. So I know that I could talk to you guys all day, <laughs> but I want to get to some deep down questions. And that is, how do people work with you and how do they work with you guys in the we like what does that look like so as people are listening and think i need a little help or my partner and i need a little bit of help because we feel we're almost there but I, you know i'm a believer that everybody needs communication help especially right now we're either too close to one another under one roof, mm -hmm. you know, or we're experiencing just so much coming at us in, in such a crazy time. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what is, what does working with you two look like? So I would say it starts, it starts as just a simple message. Hey, Amelia. Hey, Alan, we really enjoyed the conversation that you two had. We want to learn more. That's on Instagram. And then from there, we set up a time to, to meet with you and your partner, should you choose, or even if you're single and you want to have a better relationship with yourself, if you want to, you know, have a conversation with us, it, we, what we do is we send out a survey and what we do is we collect data just so that we can have a foundational point to start with. And that is a, a very simple, I believe it's 10 questions. Mm -hmm. And we, we try to pull some of that data out of, out of you and your partner so that we have a good starting point. And, and from that, we schedule time and we sit down and we have a conversation just like this. It's, it's rather informal. And that's where kind of the juice comes out. And then we go from there and see what works best. Mm. So if, you, if anyone is interested, we've done something called relationship talks for 16 weeks in a row. So it's been 16 weeks since we started this thing. Yeah. And sometimes, like she said, it's individuals. Other times it's couples. Um, we, again, we send a survey out. But basically we have 16 weeks. And here's what I can tell you from experience. Every couple, the key is getting to where you're just missing each other. Yeah. There's, there's usually an issue with trust or an issue with communication or a combination of both. Mm -hmm. And I think that from an outside perspective, Emilia and I have been studying human beings our entire life. And if you listen to either of our podcasts, that will mm -hmm. be obvious. Mm -hmm. But when we get together, it, it's almost like we call it a wedge. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the other night we got out of the gym, we go to the gym together and I sensed a wedge. In other words, I can kind of feel like there's something I'm missing. Like, is she going through something that I'm not aware of? Is there something between us? So I asked her for reassurance later that night on the phone. Mm -hmm. Like, are we good? Where are we at zero to 10 in terms of the we, our relationship? Because when you feel scarce or scared, humans do and say things they don't mean. Mm -hmm. And they mm -hmm. act out and it manifests in these really negative ways. And so what Emilia and I can do with other couples is from an unemotionalized objective standpoint, we can, we can meet couples, get them to dig, let them feel heard, understood and expressed, and then kind of find what we call the pesky bugs in the garden mm -hmm. or the wedges. Mm -hmm. And again, um, we basically have some people reach out to the past people that have been doing relationship talks. And the point I want to make here, though, is that if you're out there and you think that you couldn't benefit from something like this, I would just say check in with your humility. Mm. every single relationship can get yeah. better than it is right now. Even if you're a nine out of 10, you still can get to closer to 10. There's mm -hmm. game. You're never going to be like, oh, okay, we're done now. You've been married 30 years. There's a lot that you could probably improve too. And it's- Of course, but I, I, I think that nobody should be able to say that because not, like I just said, not every day is rainbows and lollipops. I mean, today could be an eight and tomorrow could be a 10 and the next day could be a three. Right, right. And, and it's, it's beautiful too because we're always improving. We're always having different iterations. Yeah. Of ourselves. Is it the hubby? Yeah. Can I? Yeah. Hey. You won't hear. Bend down. Oh. Hello. 
Hi. 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 Nice Hello. to see you. Hello. <laughs> that's 30 years. <laughs> love it. Love it. But yeah, we're, we're constantly yeah. changing. We're constantly yeah. evolving. There's constant iterations of ourselves. And a lot of people, you know, believe that they're not changing or they might be stuck in their ways. And we right. with different generations too, you know, there is that kind of belief and we're trying to kind of untie the shoelaces to really show you that, you know, you, you can tie this better and you can do mm -hmm. it every time. And, and communication is definitely one of the biggest things that we've found working with mm -hmm. couples and individuals are the skills that we weren't taught in school. We weren't, we didn't have a school oh, system that talked about relationships, right? Well, I think we, we weren't taught communication at any age because I, I think, you know, in my field of public relations, I talk about this all the time about communication. And what I find is, and, and it's true of my kids, you guys are closer to my kids' age, you're probably, you probably are my kids' age, we're so used to this. Yeah. Hey. And well, you don't even pick it up. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love when my kids say, why'd you leave me a message? I don't listen to my messages. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. you, you know, when, when we're starting to date online and, you know, everything starts with a text, which can be misconstrued and, you know, <clears throat> you know, we, you know, my husband and I didn't start dating that way, of course, but, you know, you had to talk on the phone, you had to talk for hours on the phone, and, um, but, and now, you know, dating online today starts with maybe a text, and then maybe FaceTime, and things like that, it, you know, the, but it's still the communication, you're not necessarily seeing body language. And in a pandemic, you're not necessarily seeing body language. And even when you're married, maybe you're seeing too much body language because <laughs> you're all too much together. But it, I mean, I do think that everybody, you know, can benefit from learning to communicate better. Yeah. Um, and Alan, I think you said it right off the bat, everything is a relationship. Your relationship with food, your relationship with the gym, your relationship with, you know, your partners in business, your, you know, so it, but it all does boil down to how you message, how you communicate. Um, I mean, I know on a daily basis, you know, yesterday when I said I was frustrated with someone, they just, probably needed to say it differently to me and I probably wouldn't have delete 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 <laughs> right <laughs> you know and what's the story too that we're saying in our head when we're interpreting something something mm -hmm. the the way things have shifted in terms of how we communicate like what was a phone call and even before technology evolved just simply face-to-face -face body interactions somatic mm -hmm. interactions it it leaves far more room and distance for us to interpret and there's 100 percent there's more walls in how we've been taught to interpret specific things depending on your culture depending on your ethnicity depending on mm -hmm. how you had relationships modeled modeled in your in your upbringing you know all of that is affecting your interpretation and if you have two totally different worlds trying to merge together there's a lot of challenge that comes in the interpretation and when you have text devices when you have you know space physical space I'm talking about where you have to interpret that more and more it gets even more challenging so um, with that there are plus sides but there are definitely downsides with that and we're seeing that over and over again especially with the pandemic um, there's been some really interesting illuminations yeah I I would imagine I mean I know that <laughs> my kids came home to live and my husband came home to work and that in itself, the whole relationship and dynamic of a family, and it changed even the dynamic of my husband and I as parents and that relationship, um, you know. And so relationships, I think, um, are ever evolving. And I think that the most important thing from when people are starting a relationship, they have to mature as well. And I think people some, sometimes forget that it's either going to mature also, or it's not. Mm -hmm. And 
And when I look back, and you guys probably can do this too, when you look back on the relationships that didn't work out, they didn't mature. You know, they, they were one's going more than right. the other, and then it's like kind of. And, and I don't mean the maturity of the ones who are like, oh, I want to get married or I want to take this to the next level. It isn't that maturity. It's the, the, I got sick and the person could have cared less or, you know, or yeah. sometimes, sometimes it was as simple for me as why am I making all the, you know, I make decisions all day long. Why am I making the decision where we're eating? And it was like, that's exhausting. Right. You know, how about you make a reservation tonight? You know? I'm so glad you went back into the, like the definition of maturation, because again, what is your definition and how is that different from the dif different generations? Too? Mm -hmm. so we're, we're constantly realizing we have to re not redefine, but reinterpret what that definition is so that we can understand what you're communicating. You know, if mm -hmm. you were talking about the marriage stuff, you know, I could have interpreted it differently than someone else, you know? So um, it is so interesting when it comes to communication because we are humans, we're always evolving. And mm -hmm. when you fail to realize that, that's when it's going to be really challenging to have beautiful, intimate relationships. And are you guys working with, um, just speaking of different maturity and things like that, are you, I mean, you guys are very young and yet you, I find you to be old souls too, um, which, uh, you know, it, it's interesting because I have a, I always say I have um, a child that's an old soul um, and one of my kids, um, um, if he's watching, he knows who he is. Um, <laughs> um, do you find that you're working with all different ages? Oh yeah, goodness. anywhere Bless. from married seven plus years, all the way to the very beginning, all the way to individuals who are still trying to find their partner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One thing that I think jumps off the page, and that's the cool part about at this point, I, I've clocked all my coaching calls and I'm, I just surpassed 610. And the reason I do that has nothing to do with me. Look how awesome I am. It, it's, it's, you see patterns in people mm -hmm. between podcasting, speaking, interviewing others, coaching. I have thousands of hours studying human beings, studying myself, understanding them. When two human beings get together, it becomes so, so obvious what the issue is when you start to ask the right questions. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's really all the relationship talks really are is us asking the right questions. One of them being, okay, so I ask Emilia this often. I try to, I say, sweetheart, is there anything about me, my character, or our relationship that's been bothering you that you wish didn't, but it still sort of does? See, what that does is it gives her permission to, to show me the pesky bug that is trying to take the garden without me knowing it. And then that way, at least I'm aware because I think that what happens is we evolve as individuals, but our goals evolve, mm -hmm. our behaviors evolve, our core values evolve, and our beliefs evolve. The problem is if that evolution takes place and we're not aware of it, we, we can't evolve with our partner. We end so up- So let, let me ask this question. You ask and open it up. Amelia, can you say, I wish you wouldn't do that? I could. And then to be honest, if I were to communicate that we would, because we are gardeners, we like to use that metaphor because we believe it's very representative of the actual action of trying to improve something mm -hmm. and weed out things that are not going to be mm -hmm. helpful to, to our growth. I would really be open to asking why one of my favorite questions is why, like that's the title of my podcast, the why power podcast, you know, like I love understanding things. And if, if, I, if there's a barrier up where, you know, I wish you didn't ask me that or something like that, then I would still feel as though, you know, I would need to give a reason. Now, some people don't need to give a reason. There's boundaries. You have, you know, you have to respect your partner's communication and that's okay. But mm -hmm. how, our, how our relationship has been really set up is so that we can help dig when it's comfortable. But understanding that courage and vulnerability is something that I would say that the average human being struggles with, especially when it gets to these challenging conversations that's where all the growth is. And that's where all the growth together can happen. What we find with working with couples and, and different types of relationships is, is those who, 
create more walls and more barriers to questions like those, mm -hmm. which are more open-ended and kind of give you the floor for you to, to show what might be challenging in the relationship. We found that the more walls that are going up, the, the more people are actually going to be growing apart. And in an inter intimate relationship, that actually doesn't really do you well in the long term when you start to compound time, you know, because mm -hmm. relationships is really what's fundamental to it is intimacy. And I define that as being known, knowing someone and being known. That all comes down to how well you're able to communicate who you are to yourself and who you are to your partner and, and vice versa. And your partner needs to want to learn you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they yeah. want, they have to want to understand. I would never ask a question like that unless I really sincerely wanted to understand her. Now the answer might be scary that she gives, and then I have to be ready to take that feedback. Right. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, take the feedback and open to changing it or just taking the feedback. Cause you know, there's both. I mean, if you, you know, if you ask the question, you're going, you're going to get the answer. Mm, right. Exactly. Yeah. And, that's and then what do you do with it? Because, you know, to me, again, in, in a 30 year marriage, if I say, is there something that I'm doing, I'm going to get the answer. Absolutely. And then I'm going to, eat, I'm going to sit with it and say, well, I guess I shouldn't do that, or I should change that. And what if I don't want to? Mm -hmm. So that's exactly it. We agreed from the very beginning that once I have that new awareness, it's my mm -hmm. choice. Yeah. I told her that I'll always support her to the very best of my ability. And the actual exact phrasing I used was, I want your light to shine as bright as possible. Okay. But the only thing I can't promise you is if that doesn't align with my highest self and what I right. believe my mission and my highest self. Mm -hmm. And so that's basically the thing is, once she gives me the feedback and I ask that question, then I have new information. What I do mm -hmm. with that, she knows is up to me. Yeah. And vice versa okay. as well. Yeah. And I think I think that's really super important because I I do something, I'll confess here. I do something that I know and my, my, for years my husband's brought it to my attention and I try really hard, but I'm I'm you probably can tell I'm really strong minded. I am my own person. My husband loves that about me. He doesn't have a problem with that. But sometimes I just make a decision that's a decision for both of us mm -hmm. or a family decision. And I'm like, oh crap, I didn't really discuss it with him. I Probably because I just kind of know like he'll be okay with it. And we've been doing this a long time, but he he deserves the absolute respect of me discussing it with him first but I just you know my day goes like this and I keep going and I didn't stop and I didn't pick up the phone and and I didn't do oh by the way and yeah. <laughs> and then it happens and that's like that's life and it's really like how much grace can you incorporate into it after the fact can you guys talk about it absolutely right and and I have to tell you my my husband is you know just easy going and then all of a sudden he'll be like hello mm -hmm. like, <laughs> you know and and I'll feel horrible because I'll be, I will be like you are a hundred percent right mm -hmm. I screwed up I, I I know that you know I I knew that and I and I do feel badly because I know that it's it, it, it if it had entered my mind to call him I would have Right. Absolutely. Like I wouldn't, it wasn't like, oh, it entered my mind. Now I won't call him, you know, or discuss it. But I, I just kept moving, <laughs> you know, so. Opportunity to extend an olive branch, if you don't mind. I, I think it, what's beautiful about this is that you're putting in effort. Yeah. I think you have to look more at the effort than the results. It's very clear that you care. So he's expressed to you something that, that he wishes would improve mm -hmm. and you right. you care enough to feel that mm -hmm. and, and try hard to, to improve upon that. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, he loves you for who you are. And as long as you're trying, that's, yeah, that's said, yeah, too, you know? <laughs> I do. I just, I just feel badly after I've done it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would, you know, <laughs> you sit with that in, in yourself and how much do you ask yourself? Like, what's the self-talk after situations like that? Because a lot of people 
you know, and, and I'm guilty of this too, because I'm, I'm very, what we call M very like a, a, especially when I'm in work mode, it's very like much strong woman. Right. I'm, and I make decisions and I'm <sighs> cute, like, and sometimes I, I have just such a laser focus on success that results matter far more than, it, than the experience that he and I might have. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that can really negatively impact the we, the, the space between us. And so what I've found is that the more that I'm willing to, and this takes a lot of courage and vulnerability on, on the part of my, you know, myself is how much I'm willing to really sit in that, like, kind of shame. Like there's a little shame associated with that, right? A little bit of guilt and shame. And I think that when we can really sit in those moments, we can feel it because when we're in very results mode, you know, like you, when you're working, you just mm-hmm. want to make a decision, execute and move to the next thing. Mm-hmm there's not a lot of time and space for feeling your emotions. And so we kind of numb ourselves to what happens in that emotion, you know, Mm -hmm. the actual result of how it might impact your partner. And so when you can really sit in kind of that shame after your day's done, think about it, you know, you're still feeling it in your heart. See, really talk to yourself and say like, okay, sorry, what can we do next time? And how yeah. can I, how can I reshift my world a little bit? If that's something that you want to, and you feel pulled and that's in alignment with you, mm. what can you do next time? And I found the more and more that you actually sit in that shame, talk to yourself. I know it might sound silly, but talk no. to about it. You're, you're opening up your reticular activating system. One of Alan's favorite words, mm-hmm. which is the, the parts of your brain that that kind of search for certain things that you're looking for. So one of the examples that Alan always gives gives is if you want a red car, you're going to be driving around and you're going to start noticing red cars all over the place far more than you would have if you wanted a white car. And so it's the same thing. You're, you're activating those parts of your brain that are seeing the opportunities for you to actually activate far more in alignment with what and who you aspire to be as a partner than last time. And it's, we find those more iterations that we do that we're allowed in those moments to actually have a, a better time to choose in those moments where say, for example, you need to make a decision for your family and it's like, okay, I'm just going to make, oh, wait a second. This is that moment. And mm-hmm. then you can make a little tweak. I found that to be very- I love this. <laughs> oh my God. I feel like I should Venmo you therapy. <laughs> no, but this is, this is, this is, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I, this is what, this is, but this is what I wanted people to see today, because I think this is what, I mean, I don't care. I, I think this is what people need to hear because it is that little shift. And I can, I, I feel that. Like I, I feel it's, it's sometimes take a beat, Yeah, mm. yeah. take a beat, take a beat, listen to what you're, you know, because it's like the moment of, oh, wait, you're right. This is that moment where I, I did this before. Wait, I need to call Mitch. You know, I need to have this discussion really quick. And he's going to be like, oh, that's a good decision for the kids or that, you right. know. Yeah. And that's the thing too. And, and it's, it's really what what do you want your result to be? And it's like, mm-hmm. you want to have greater, deeper intimacy in your mm-hmm. partners. I haven't come across a partnership that has said no to that question, <laughs> you know? So it's finding those opportunities, not necessarily finding. Well, if you do, it's probably because the bags are being packed and they're walking out the door true. anyway. True. So true. <laughs> very true. So, but that's the thing. And, and I, I say that because you want to be more intimate with yourself. And I think that's something that people are a little uncomfortable about doing. How much do you really want to know yourself? And that's kind of the areas where well, shame and guilt that are that's mm-hmm. associated where that's a beautiful learning opportunity for you to just become a beautiful, better person. Of, and that's based off of who you define you want to be, right. who you aspire to be, who you want to become. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. Well, I feel like we are out of time on a Saturday. I, I beg you. Let's do this again. Let's do it. I would love that. I absolutely want to do it again. You know, I want to keep the conversation going. Um, we will talk. We'll figure out. Maybe people will call call us or do something fun. Um, but I just adore you guys. I'm so happy that somehow we were brought together because, you know, I'm a big believer in things come together. Um, 
I was telling you, Kevin and Taryn are coming Friday night, I think at six o'clock. Um, so if you just happen to be walking by, drop, on. <laughs> drop in with them. Um, but I'm going to talk to your partner, your business partner, podcast partner. We're going to talk about relationships too. Um, but I definitely want to talk more about the we with you guys because I love this. I think this is such a vulnerable time with people. Um, I love your relationship. I'm so glad Mitch, I dragged him in. I'm glad we got to meet Mitch. Do you want to laugh? I know where he was going. All my friends adore this, but he was going to the grocery store. Oh, <laughs> guy. He does, he's been doing the grocery shopping. I do a little bit of it, but oh. this, this is the best part. Here, here's my 30 year, almost 30 year. He once criticized me very young in our marriage about my grocery shopping. And the criticism was that he, I went grocery shopping and he said, like, we keep throwing all this stuff out. Like you buy stuff and we're throwing it out. Mm -hmm. And I was like, do you not like how I grocery shop? And he's like, well, you're buying stuff and we're throwing out. And I'm like, do, do you think you could do better? And he's like, well, I, I, he's like, I, I think that, yeah. We wouldn't be throwing stuff out. And I'm like, hmm. that's yours. <laughs> <laughs> so guess what? Oh, that's great. Amelia, <laughs> my mother taught me well, I'd like to say, <laughs> that my mother always worked. And she taught me that if you get criticized, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the task might just shift. <laughs> so I do go, I do go to the grocery store, but my husband decided that he might be able to do it better than I. And I decided to let him show me how. Now, now my question to you is how much is there to go to waste now? I don't care. I don't have to go to the grocery store. And <laughs> let me just say, if we, if we throw anything out, I don't criticize. <laughs> I, I know better. Yeah. <laughs> But he used he used to do the same thing. Like I would go to Costco and I'd be like, "Look at this really cute sweater! Look at the sweatpants I got!" And he's like, "That wasn't on the Costco list. <laughs> You're not allowed to go to Costco. What are you buying at Costco?" Oh yeah, Costco is a whole thing. <laughs> so this these two these kinds of things make a good marriage too. But he is he is my so my girlfriends always say to me like I saw your husband at Kroger today. I'm like oh. <laughs> he's very good at grocery shopping <laughs> and he's he makes a list and he only gets the things on the list which actually drives me crazy he only gets the things on the list so therefore i do go to the grocery store and get all the things that aren't on the list <laughs> the things I'm that aren't on the, on the list, list. Yeah. that's funny that's funny that's so you go there you go <laughs> those are the things that make the marriage work he gets the list i get the things not on the list Hey, whatever works. Right. <laughs> and I learned very early that if he was going to criticize me, I was not going to criticize him because it gets done. Right. You might just push that on back your way. <laughs> and if you two want to sign up for a relationship talk, <laughs> let, let us know. We'll find the. the, the oh, yeah. We, we're, we would be a hoot. <laughs> I'd be, I'd be a little afraid. He might have a long list. He might have a grocery shopping list. And you might have things not on the list. Not on the list. Yeah, yeah exactly. I adore you guys. Um, I will be in touch this week. We, I, I'd love to have you guys back in March and do something. Um, I just, I, I really do adore all the messaging. I think it's just such, such a great time to have out there and wish you all great success. Thank you so much. All right. Appreciate you. Have an amazing day. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's, Happy Valentine's Day. day. Thank you. Love, Thank you so everyone. much for having me. Much us. love. See you soon. Talk Hi. to you soon. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.